Today, I'm gonna to show you my DIY Indoflay. In one of my previous videos, I showed you how I mounted the XTM BCF compressor in the back of the Land Cruiser 200 series. And I also alluded to the fact that I was going to, I can't remember if I had or I was going to make, a DIY Indoflate uh, inflated deflator to go along with this setup. And I have done that. It's been a while since I've posted that video. I've been using this properly out there in the wild, so to speak, and it's been working really, really well. In fact, it seems to be way, way faster than doing it with a single inflation hose. I know this because I've got a friend who's got the exact same compressor who uses it in the bag as per uh, the intentions of the manufacturer. He's got smaller tires than me. He pumps them up to a lower pressure than me and I still beat him when I inflate all four of my tires to 50 PSI or 45 for the fronts and 55 for the rears. Now, I always hoped that that would be the case. Um, I'm not particularly sure on the science. I think probably because these compressors become super inefficient at higher pressures and because they're at a lower pressure for longer, you're probably increasing the efficiency on, on the amount of air that that compressor can move over the time that you're inflating those tires. I'm not 100% sure. But the other great thing about it is being able to equalize those two tires and having your two fronts and your two rears at exactly the same pressure without even having to worry about it. But the big deal for me was the fact that I don't have to uh, get down on my hands and knees around the tires in the sun with the heat of the engine blowing up in my face and I can just stand at the back and just turn the tap on and off and check the pressures as I go. I can keep the doors closed because I put the air outlet on the outside, which means that the flies and heat and everything go into the car when you come off the beach and it's a hot day. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go and have a look, shall we? So I keep all of my tire gear in the very last part of the drawers at the back here. And I do still use the Storms. It's still got a place. I still use this um, you know, quick valve removal tire inflator. Majuva thing, thing, Majuva thing, because it still has a place. And I still use my trusty, good quality uh, Hafner tire pressure gauge. Um, but those are all separate to this little DIY kit. Now, if you're not sure how I set up the XTM compressor, you'll need to watch the video up there. But down at the back of the car, I have a male fitting, which corresponds to the factory style uh, air inflation hose that comes with the XTM compressor and many of those Chinese compressors. So in order to make this DIY kit, what you're going to have to do first is buy a second hose. Now you can see this is the second hose. This is the slightly newer one. And these are, well, I found them actually quite pricey. I think it was somewhere around $50. Now, these actually came with pressure gauges on them and I have removed them. They had a little T-piece. You pull this spring here off and the T-piece uh, allowed a little pressure gauge. Now, one of those pressure gauges is actually right here and this is the little cover that came with the factory hoses so the pressure gauge is just screwed into a t-piece here all these parts were bought off ebay but you could very easily go and buy these from a hydraulic shop or somewhere like that maybe bunnings don't generally have these types of uh, a variety of these fittings and they are also horrendously expensive so what i have here is a little tiny t-piece with female fittings and then it goes to these male fittings here, which I can plug both of these hoses onto. This female fitting here, it simply connects to the back of the car. And then I have a little ball valve tap here to turn the air on and off. So what this allows me to do is just stand here at the back of the car without even barely bending over and check my pressures by turning the air inflation valve on and off. And I'll show you that in just a second. I'll go and set this up and um, I'll show you how it all works.
Okay, so I've got it all set up. The two hoses are plugged in to my little adapter here. Uh, the tap is currently switched off and we've got both of the wheels hooked up. Now there's enough hose on both of these to run to the back of the jet ski trailer or the caravan and also to the front of the vehicle. And then over here we have the switch for the air compressor. Now, ordinarily I'd run the engine while I'm running the air compressor, but for this demonstration, I'm not going to, um, just because it, <laughs> we're right next to the VDJ exhaust there and that's gonna be way too loud. So let's fire it up. Now, as you'll know from the previous video on the install, the air compressor will cut out, which it's just done because it's now got up to, I think about 110 PSI. Because I've got the valve shut here, it's just telling me how much pressure is currently in the tires. And we can see there that we're sort of around 38 PSI. I'd say they are cold at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn the valve on. The air compressor should start straight up. All right, now one thing to note is that the pressure that you're reading on here, which is now saying 50 PSI, is a false reading. That's not the correct reading because it's under pressure from the air compressor. We need to turn the compressor off to get an accurate reading. And now that we've turned that valve off, you'll hear the air compressor load up and then stop. And you can see that our pressure has now dropped to the accurate pressure, just somewhere around 45 PSI. These are the rears. I run them a little bit harder than that. I run them up about 50, so we'll just keep going. See that running the compressor without the uh, engine running is really not a great idea. It really loads everything up unnecessarily. All right, so we're getting very close there. This would actually pump faster if I had the engine running, so that's why it's a little bit slow. I might just leave it there for this part of the demonstration. So uh, what we can do now is if we want to remove these, we can take them off the tires first. Here we are getting a little bit of leakage from those two tires just momentarily. Okay, now that they're removed, we can remove this whole unit off the back. I'm gonna leave these attached because I'm gonna show you deflating in just a second. You'll hear there's quite a bit of pressure. Probably should have turned the air compressor off first. All right, so <laughs> that was silly. <coughs> Gotta love this kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> to deflate, I've actually got a male to male fitting. And all we have to do is remove this and put the male to male fitting in the end. Just like that. Now we can hang that there and we can leave that valve off and we can go on and Plug our tyres back on. Alrighty, so now to deflate the tyres, I can just pick this up and hold it at a nice convenient height and I can just turn that on and off to deflate my tyres. And it will give me the pressure as I'm going along. Really cool. Now, it's super lazy and it works really well but that's not the fastest way to do it. That's why I still have all of these things here. So this is definitely the fastest way to do a single tire. It's definitely not the fastest way to do all four. The Storms are still faster, believe it or not. This is really good because these cheap gauges, like that one down there, they aren't 100% accurate. So this is good to just get a gauge, so to speak, of uh, how inaccurate your dodgy gauges are. And then you can basically use your, your brain to work out the difference. So that one there is sometimes around about five to five to 10 PSI out, uh, depending on how high the pressure is. So um, you can check one tire and then you know pretty much where you're at, but it, it's close enough, is good enough most of the time. Now, this is really good. This is really good. This is really good, but this, is awesome because what I can do is I can go and put these on the car I can stick that on the caravan and if I need to deflate all six tires at once and then I can just stand around and do my thing 
and uh, find a shady spot and not have to worry about getting down on my hands and knees. So having all three alternatives is really, really good because they all come in handy at different times. And look, let's face it, these are all pretty cheap. Storms are probably the most expensive thing here. Now, the question you're probably all asking is how much did this cost? Well, interestingly enough, um, it's not that cheap. Even buying it on eBay, you're probably looking at close to $100, maybe even a smidge over, depending on how you go with your fittings and your hoses. And an Indeflate is, what, $220 or something around that mark. So the Indeflate's actually not terrible value. But to be perfectly honest, I actually prefer the way that mine works. And I think it might, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but I think it might be faster because it's not using the Schrader valves to join it all together using those Nitto fittings. So, um, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Do you think that the Indeflate at double the price of doing it yourself is still worth it? Because I think it's a nice bit of kit. It looks really good. I've never used one. I've seen lots of videos on them. Or do you think the DIY is the way to go? And do you think mine's actually a little bit faster than the Indeflate? Or do you think the Indeflate would still be quicker than mine, inflation and deflation wise? All right, that's going to be enough for this video, guys. Um, we're heading off to the Philippines very, very soon. You'll be seeing some content from over there. Um, but it'll probably take us a while to film and edit it and get that up. So uh, it'll be a little while between this video and our next one. But we will see you in the next one.